G'day guys, okay today we're going to learn about the pen tool, probably one of the most powerful drawing tools in Illustrator. Um, so here we go. Okay, so you'll see the artwork we drew last time, the louvers um, in the line work on the gridded workspace on the artboard. So I'm just going to press control and the double apostrophe to turn off that grid. And what we're going to do now is use this tool over here on the left hand side next to the text tool called the pen tool with the shortcut P, you can bring that up. And I'll just draw a few quick shapes to show you what the pen tool can do. Uh, just bear in mind, because we're doing this uh, sort of one thing at a time, um, these tools are extremely powerful uh, when used in conjunction with other techniques like using layers, um, and uh, which you'll be very familiar with if you've done any CAD work, um, or using the stroke tool, the fill tool, uh, using the fill um, options, patterns, making your own patterns, making your own dashes and um, dash strokes. You can really do absolutely anything with this tool um, and you can edit it afterwards as I'll show you now. I'll just show you a few quick things about what it can do. Okay, so I'll grab my hand tool, get into some free space, get my pen tool again. So the hand tool was H and there's a, you can customize your own um, um, mouse shortcut to drag and drop as in CAD. If I just drop a few points, so I will go my pen tool, I'll click once, twice, three times, four times. You can see it's just drawing a polyline. And if I click on the last one, or the first point, it finishes the thing off. So I'll just click off onto the selection tool, and there we have our shape. So I'll select that. And you'll remember if I can grab a single point using the direct selection tool, or even grab a line, I can drag that entire line. It remains exactly as it is in geometrical space and the other uh, points just have to connect to it differently. Or I'll grab an individual point, or if I hold shift and grab two points, I can move them like that. There we go. Rather minimalist Australia right there. Okay, so a quick few quick things. Um, you'll see I've got my swatches panel open on the right hand side. You can bring that up in the essentials bar by pressing the uh, little grid. Um, now just a quick introduction, these two um, shapes down here indicate the fill, which is the one on the top left hand side, and the stroke. If you click one, they become active. So if I click the fill and it's active, and I um, choose a color in my swatches panel over here on the right, and choose red, Oop, it wasn't selected. You have to have the geometry selected. Again, make sure the fill is active. Boom. Just showing you quickly, you can see you can generate a fill. You can do the same with patterns. Uh, it's a very intelligent tool, and you can obviously do the same with strokes. We'll look at more into that later. I'll just delete that. Okay, what I'm going to do now is draw a curved geometry using the pen tool. Um, now, I would normally always do this using layers, because what I want to do here is fix up this line down here. As you'll notice, they're quite uh, broken, unmanageable. I want to be able to select it as a whole. Um, now, it's extremely quick to do in Illustrator, much more so than most people would think. Um, what you, uh, but I'm not going to draw on top of it straight away because it's on the same layer. Um, and what happens if you click on an existing line, as I'll show you, I'll grab my stroke, and I will draw a line. That's got a stroke of one millimeter, black stroke. Now I'll just grab my pen tool on the left. There it is. And if I click on an existing point to start off with, it will just continue that line even if I, for the pen tool, originally had a different appearance property set, like if it was a red line or if it was a dashed line, it would continue drawing the same property of the line I just clicked on. Extremely useful for extending and editing uh, lines. As you'll see, if I go down to, I'll zoom in. We'll just zoom in down here. I've got the same pen tool, I haven't changed any of the properties. I'll click once on one side and again on another line and you'll see it just joins them up extremely useful um, property so so that if I was to select that line you'll see it has become one geometry extremely useful okay but back out to my original example what I am going to do now is just draw a similar line to that it won't be directly over the top and you can draw it directly over the top. That's using layers, and I'll show you how to do that soon. 
I'll just show you the basic mechanics of drawing with a pen tool. I'll click once over there, I'll click a second time there. I haven't dragged at all, but what I'm going to do now here is start drawing, dragging a tangent. So you could imagine it's like a spring that's got a bit of pent up um, energy that just wants to uh, bend out. And if I click, we'll say down there, and I drag up a bit like that, you'll see I'm able to control and give it a curvature. And I come down to there. Now if I just hold down Alt and zoom in, I want to give that a wait, nope, don't like that. Control Alt Z, undo it. Nope, don't like that. Control Alt Z, undo that. That one's a bit better. You can see we can more gently ease into our corners as I'll just control Alt Z that one. work but there we go and then one down here now be good time to uh, mention that I actually don't always use the mouse for these sorts of endeavors um, I'm much better at using a um, Wacom tablet or you can use any tablet for that manner but you may have seen them um, come and see me in the CAD labs if you want to see what it is have a go with it um, it's basically a uh, mechanical pen um, which acts like a mouse and uh, it's uh, well, touch sensitive and you're able to draw as though you were drawing with um, a pen. It's extremely useful and popular in graphic design with tools such as Illustrator and Photoshop. But come and see me if you want to find out a bit more about that. Now this would be a mirror image of that. Well, it would be identical to this uh, line if I was using it as a reference but we'll learn more about that in the Layers tool. So. If I just go up to my path editing, or sorry, my direct selection tool, so here's my line. Again, if I want to grab a singular point, make it a bit more accurate, and you'll start. I think we're actually still snapping to grid here. That might be what's going on. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so careful about that. You're always worth checking. Turn off snap to grid. There we go. That makes things a little bit more easy okay and you saw this handle before just like the path editing I can grab the handle and control the curvature after I've drawn it so you don't have to get it perfect first time you really can rush into it um, and then go and tweak it later until it does achieve perfection it really allows you to um, masterfully um, control the geometry okay so what um, I will do at this point to fix up this geometry which has been generated in Revit and I should mention now it was a geometry originally generated in uh, the package Rhino using parametric software which was then um, taken into Re uh, Revit and then generated as a vector um, line work so during that process um, which is using some pretty tricky software um, communications you do lose a bit of information so it's brilliant when it comes to creating a drawing and most emphasis on any architectural presentation should never be in uh, the 3D model, um, well, it's just not, at, not at university at least, um, but in the fact that you're creating drawings, whether it's a perspective, a render, or an elevation or a section, um, and that's why Illustrator can be such um, a powerful tool, because it allows you to um, take shortcuts early on, or um, just get out of 3D when you find yourself doing inane um, activities that you could do quite easily in 2D.